Dr. Wayne. My name is Ryan Biedma. I'm a student in the PHSC online BSN program. This is my video assessment. Um, it's going to be a focused cardiac assessment. The patient in the scenario is a 40-year-old female complaining of um, a headache and not feeling well. Pertinent vital signs would be hypertension 190 over 102 and tachycardic at 90. <laughs> now our patient for the assessment um, happens to be a 40-year-old male. Um, but we'll just um, we'll just go on with the assessment regardless. Now for the cardiac assessment, what we're initially going to do is we walk into the room. We can tell a lot by their skin color, temperature, and their moisture. But for the focused cardiac assessment, we're actually going to look rather than the heart, but to the neck. So we're going to look for JVD, which typically is not present when the patient's lying at a 30 to 45 degree angle. We're also going to assess um, the carotid pulses. So we're going to feel for them initially, palpating, one at a time. Okay. The left one as well. Okay, we're feeling for symmetry. Um, we're also going to auscultate the carotid arteries, and what we're looking for is essentially uh, a carotid brewery, which would indicate uh, turbulent blood uh, flow through that artery. Uh, this patient has a history, a family history of hypertension and a paternal history um, from the father's side of high cholesterol, so something to rule out. Um, it's recommended to use the bell of a stethoscope. I actually only have an adult diaphragm and a pediatric diaphragm, so we'll just use the diaphragm for the remainder of the assessment. Sir, if I could have you turn your head slightly to the left. And if you could hold your breath for roughly 5 to 10 seconds while I listen. Okay. You can breathe. We're going to do the same thing on the left side. Turn your head slightly and if you could hold your breath. observed or listened to. Um, now we're going to actually focus on the heart and the chest and rather than go right towards auscultation we're going to look at inspection and palpation. What we're looking for is the point of maximum impulse which on certain individuals if you use tangential lighting you can actually physically see it um, but essentially you can rest your palm on the sternal body and palpate an impulse with your hands, your fingers, and then if palpated, you can pinpoint it down with just one finger. It should be roughly the size of a penny. On most normal healthy individuals, it's the fifth intercostal, intercostal space, midclavicular. Um, but it can be displaced laterally in the case of um, a hypertrophic heart. Um, and the way that a heart becomes hypertrophic is if there's a long-standing history of hypertension, which this patient um, might have been undiagnosed with that. It's roughly actually midclavicular, fifth intercostal. Um, we're going to listen to the four areas of the heart. Um, there are more areas to listen to, but we're going to focus on specifically where the heart valves are. We have your aortic, your pulmonic, your tricuspid, and your mitral. The first two, aortic and pulmonic, um, they're typically at the second inter intercostal space, one on the right, one on the left. How we can find the intercostal space is we have the suprasternal notch, which is just above the manubrium, then where the manubrium connects to the sternal body is the angle of Louis. And just lateral to the angle of Louis, bilaterally, is where the second rib connects to the sternal body. So the space right below that will be your second intercostal space. So let's listen to the aortic valve. listening for, among many things, um, along with the heart tones, are murmurs, um, which basically signify some sort of um, turbulent blood flow through the artery. 
whether due to regurgitation, backflow, or just valve dysfunction such as stenosis. We're going to listen to the remaining areas. The pulmonic valve is the second left intercostal space. And then we're going to go on to the tricuspid, which is the fourth. and the mitral, which is the fifth midclavicular, typically where the apex is as well. Okay, on this patient, they all sound fairly normal. Um, this isn't the patient in the scenario. Um, but with regards to the scenario, a couple things to focus on would be the extra heart tones, heart sounds that you would hear given the situation. Um, a common one with people with long-standing hypertension is the S4 gallop. Um, it's an accessory tone brought on by the atria forcefully pushing blood into a non-compliant ventricle. And reasons for the uh, ventricle being non-compliant would be hypertrophy. It's very muscular. And it doesn't expand as easily because it's that much more muscular. Um, that's typically heard um, typically where the mitral valve area is. And sometimes you can hear it better when the patient is left lateral to cubitus. So, sir, if you could take your left arm above and lean a little bit more to the left. Perfect. Okay, go back. Now the S4 typically occurs in the very late systolic phase or pre-diastolic. Um, it typically goes S1, uh, is the closure of the tricuspid and the mitral valve. S2 is the closure of the aortic and the pulmonic valve. Uh, an accessory sound also would be S3, which occurs after that. And then at the very end of S3, prior to S1, would be S4. Um, so considering that this patient does have a probably an undiagnosed history of hypertension and is complaining of a head pain and it's fairly hypertensive, um, it's most likely that the hypertension is causing the headache and her issues. So a further follow-up cardiac exam would probably be warranted, some blood work, triglycerides, and EKG. That may be significant of um, LVH as well. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much.